Hey, Hexy. Well it's done for winning the competition. Thank you. Thank you. This is your. This is what you built. This is the visual. Yes. This is. This is amazing. Do you want to talk us through where, what it actually does? Sure. So basically, it's um, a device that lets you test soap, or chemical, or wine-powered energy delivery devices. Right. Like you might see here, like a battery, a solar cell, a conventional power supply. And the way it does it is it draws test current, which is under control of the internal microprocessor, and it observes the change in voltage that you might see. It captures that data, and then presents it ultimately on a, a web display. And, the, and what's the main thing that someone's going to be using this for? Well, a number of things. One would be to test, for example, in the power supply, its voltage regulation accuracy, which you might want to know if you were building a computer. Right, right. Or the maximum power delivered by a solar cell. Okay, so if you were specking your solar system. Or exactly. Okay. Yeah. A little unusual, perhaps, in that it combines test generation and data capture and data presentation all in one box. And because of that, it has a pretty... Uh, yeah, you've packed it all in here. Yeah. So do you want to talk us through actually what all the different bits in here are? Sure. So, we start, of course, with the embed module here with the, uh, the blue light, and it's uh, basically uh, um, in the center of this uh, digital board, which has in it a USB 4 gig expansion memory to store the data results. Okay, so you can store a lot of results in that, I guess. And exactly. Yeah, okay. And then download those later. We have little I2C uh, EEPROM to... Um, maintain operating parameters which are saved to shut down and reloaded when it's powered up next time. We have some opto isolators here which couple the digital board to the analog board over here which has a dual channel DAC, the opto receivers, isolated power supply and which drives the actual current sync bank here in the back. This is made up of um, some MOSFET transistors, some fan cooled heat sinks and is all under the control of the, uh, the processor. Then we have in the back uh, the Ethernet jack, the mag jack in fact, which is uh, plugged into the embed to this extension cord, and a serial control for those moments when uh, even the Ethernet uh, is down. Right, right. That's Yeah, that's a pretty impressive, and it looks like you've pretty much used every uh, interface on the uh, 1768 there. Exactly. In fact, we ran out of pins, used everything there. I had to put a SPI port expander to get five more pins. All right, brilliant. And uh, for one of the non-supported modules, the QEI interface, I even put a couple of flying leads in the bottom oh, of the embed module. You've been doing some modding on the, uh, the embed as well. A little modding. Oh, that's Almost every uh, I.O. device in the embed is, is in use. I didn't use the CAN because there's no automobile nearby. <laughs> but everything else, the analog converter, the, the QEI, and so forth, all used. Okay, so you're, you're using PWM to control um, all these heat sinks that are at the back, uh, the fans on the heat sink. Fans on the heat sink, there's a little... There's a heat sink temperature sensor that feeds the analog digital converter. Fans are controlled in response to that. Two other signals are used to drive this multimeter on the front panel so that we can display parameters like pulse width and duty cycle. Okay, so this would be an example of a web page served by the visualizer. This is the, the page used if you were, for example, testing a power supply. At the top, you see a summary of the operating condition. In this case, it says it's drawing effective current of 1.7 amps. We have no, nothing connected, so zero volts at the moment, and of course zero watts, and the, the uh, heat sink temperature right now is 21 degrees C. Now down below you see the, the uh, panel that uh, reflects the setting of the front panel controls. For example, the load value control is now reading around uh, 9.4 amps. So Simon, I made great use of all your, uh, your great handbook libraries here. Okay, brilliant. I used, uh, obviously, the handbook libraries to support all the internal hardware. In addition, there are a number of cookbook libraries that build on top of that with things like the network and the stack, um, the file system for the USB flash drive, and so on. I included a super tweet so I can tweet the IP address of the machine when it first comes up. <laughs> That's brilliant. So this is when you power it up, it lets you go and tell the world where this power meter is in the world. That's right. That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. And finally, uh, a couple of things where I had to write my own libraries for the QEI hardware and uh, for a timer. So these are, the, these are basically the things that were custom to your design. That's right. The rest of the things you could pull together from, That's right. from the, uh, the environment. And then, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, pulling it all together yeah. into what ends up to be quite an impressive bit of kit here. And then you can see uh, really plenty of horsepower left. Only about a quarter, a little over a quarter of the memory was used for flash. And um, uh, there's plenty of RAM available also for expansion. And then some examples of the sort of uh, results you get using this. Here we see a, a picture from the oscilloscope. 
where the top trace shows the output voltage from a power supply going through a current sampling resistor. The middle trace is the synchronization signal that comes out of the front panel uh, jack. And the lower trace is the current waveform that's being generated by this project. You can see it's going from about two tenths of an amp up to about two amps. And as it rises, the power supply voltage dips, and you can even see a little overshoot, 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 uh, reflecting the fact that it's not the greatest power supply. So that would be an example of using it to test the characteristics of the power supply. This middle panel shows how it was used to test the storage capacity of a NICAD battery. Uh, I set the machine to draw a constant current of around 250 milliamps, and then sampled the voltage about every 15 seconds for a period of I don't know, four hours, until ultimately the voltage dropped to a minimum value when the test was completed. And that shows, at the end of the test, just about 930 milliamp hours have been delivered. Okay, and then in terms of actually using the MBIP, what, what did you end up using? Well, I ended up using pretty much everything that was on there. Okay. I used uh, analog, digital, serial, I2C, Ethernet. Uh, in fact, I ran out of pins on the, uh, the MBIP itself. Ended up having to add some expansion port, and I even hooked up a few extra hair wires to it myself. Oh, super. And you said it used USB as well? So USB and Ethernet? Yes, use used USB uh, for an expansion memory, a flash memory, a 4 gig flash memory and Ethernet to present the data results of the input. Use the analog channels to sample the input controls, digital channels for things like LED and